Hey guys, how's it going, companion? So yesterday in Arena, uh, I was drafting a deck, you know, just whatever, some typical stuff, and it was early on in Arena, and it drew a draft, and I had the option to pick either an Ironbark Protector or a Zombie Chow, and the last card sucked, so we're just gonna forget about that. And, uh, you know, immediately I was telling chat how, you know, Zombie Chow is obviously the best card to pick, because, well, uh, one-drops are really good, and really good one-drops are absolutely insane. Um, so it doesn't really matter, like, um, it doesn't really matter that Ironbark is like a class-defining card in Arena, and it is, like, some of you guys may not know that, but uh, Arena games tend to go the distance, tend to go to that 8th, sometimes 10th, and often, you know, past that uh, Mana Crystal, and uh, you do get to play these cards, and often they make a pretty big impact in the game, um, and, uh, yeah, people were surprised, but uh, really this, um, this theme is a consistent one. This really highlights not just how things are going in Arena, but how things are going in Hearthstone as a whole, where uh, creatures that are really big and really cool and really powerful and really class-defining or whatever are just not that good in the game because they just cost too much mana. And, um, you know, I I'd sometimes joke around how um, frequently when People ask me what I think of this card, what I think of that card, how cool would it be if they made this card, and basically the general rule is, well, if it's over like, uh, you know, six or seven mana, it basically needs to be completely broken to be actually played at all. Um, and a lot of the cards in the game that are in that mana range are not. So they might introduce like a pretty good or a really good like eight mana card, but it really just sucks because it doesn't fit into the theme of the game. The theme of the game is you take control of the board immediately and you keep pushing with your aggression, you play very efficient turns, uh, just play on curve every single turn, aggressive, bam. And in Arena, this is harder to punish because often people don't have answers, don't have board clears, and um, some of this ties into a um, post from the author of Hearth Arena. This is uh, ADWCTA, I believe. And uh, he made an update on his Hearth Arena. Hearth Arena is a website that allows people to have a guide uh, and some number crunching stuff on how people draft arena decks, uh, comparing cards and ranking them. And it is a system I use sometimes to verify my opinion. And this, in this, in this case, Zombie Chow versus Iron Bark, I was confident that if, if Hearth Arena is worth a damn, Zombie Chow would be on top, and as you can see there, it was. And in fact, Zombie Chow is tied for the fourth best common card a Druid can get, and Druid is really known for its really powerful class cards and base cards, and uh, you know, a lot of them are just kind of knocked off the list, like, you know, you, <laughs> you have Swipe, you have Druid of the Claw, Pilot of Shredder is like pretty good, and you have Zombie Chow. You know, that's that's really the state of the game that we're in. Um, and they really highlighted this in their recent update, which I thought was really interesting because it was something I was feeling more and more in Arena. People are drafting a lot more tempo decks in Arena, uh, and, you know, they're just playing on curve a lot of the time because of that. They're drafting early game. They're drafting very well curved decks. So even though you might be that player that you have the good 2-drop, good 3-drop, good 4-drop, good 5-drop, Sometimes that's enough to win the game, but, you know, you, half a year ago, it, it used to win every single game. But these days, it actually doesn't. Because if you have the perfect 2, 3, 4, 5, and you're going second, and your opponent plays a 1, 2, 3, 4, doesn't even have a 5, you will actually lose. Uh, and you will lose because the creature that he played at the start of the game uh, will mean that he will be up one creature the entire game. So you have to think about it this way. Um, in the perfect both player, you know, creature type of meta or basically arena game, when both players have, um, you know, very well curved creature base and the creatures trade for each other, if he has a one drop and a two and a three and a four and a five and all I have is a two, three, four, five, um, that one drop and sometimes because some creatures trade up, that one drop, then it might shift to the two drop, then it might shift to the three drop, will hit me every single turn. And usually on turn like eight, coupled with some chargers or some spells, I will lose strictly because even though I had a perfect curve, I was missing the one drop. And the one drop is extremely valuable these days in Arena, just like it is in Constructed. Uh, it's kind of shifted to that stage there as well. 
And uh, in the recent update, they changed the rankings of some cards and it really shows this. And this is like the cards that got buffed the most. And we'll talk about like the Dr. Boom and Tyrion stuff at, at, at the end there. That's, that's kind of a different topic. That's also pretty interesting. It ties into this a little bit. But what I really want you guys to see is, you know, cards like Wisp got like a plus 10. Cards like Goldshire Footman got a plus 14. Are you serious? You know? Um, so it really highlights how it doesn't even matter like the quality of some of these cards. Just having a decent one drop um, or just having a one drop in some cases is good enough. A lot of one drops uh, are pretty decent, but they just die to mediocre one drops. So for instance, you know, like Lepernome is a pretty good one drop, but Lepernome dies to a wisp. It dies to, you know, a young Dragonhawk. It dies literally to the crappiest of the crappy. Um, so because everyone is shifting to that type of play, um, the quality doesn't have to be as significant as the quantity. Um, to have a really good arena deck, you need, you know, the bases, you know, just generally high card quality, generally good curve. But if you don't have like two or three one drops, you will just lose a few games because of that, because your opponent will, even though his card quality will be fairly low. So that's why Zombie Chow is actually quite a lot better than Iron Bark. I would actually argue that Zombie Chow is so, so much better than Iron Bark, the rankings on Hearth Arena are actually a little bit off. I think in, in quite a few cases, Zombie Chow may actually be the best common card for Druid as well as a lot of other classes. So that's kind of on the low end. On the high end, the, um, uh, the cards were shifted in another way. As you saw, Doctor Room got like plus 34 or something like that. Hearthstone did another update to really show how much better some of these cards are. So previously they had their ratings capped at like 100 and famously I kept talking about how Tyrion is the absolute best card in the game because 100% of the time when you're playing Paladin you'll pick Tyrion. Uh, not only is this not the case, as we can see here, but they changed the rating system to a ceiling of 130. So it allows uh, for some changes. And we can see that Dr. Boom uh, apparently is about as good as Tyrion, which basically makes it by far the absolute best neutral legendary card in Arena. And largely that's because, well, uh, Dr. Boom is really overpowered, Tyrion is really overpowered, but Tyrion costs 8 mana. So actually as a Paladin, uh, I would argue that if you don't have too many taunts, um, you know, you might pick Tyrion, but if you do have enough taunts, if you have a few weapons, you'd probably pick Dr. Boom. Uh, so that does that does uh, show in that way. We also see Anixia very high and Deathwing very high. Uh, removal is reduced in Arena because with the addition of new cards, they're never really introducing new, like, removal cards for anybody. Like, it's not like, you know, Druid got a Hex last expansion. People don't get that. Like, classes, that's not the way the game is moving. Um, so Deathwing actually is better and better every patch, and Anixia just floods the board with garbage, which is, you know, you need garbage to fight against garbage. So because of that, those are your top legendaries these days in, in Arena, and I do absolutely agree with that. But also because of the ceiling, they got to distinguish the good from the really good cards, and we can see that um, in, in the Paladin. So Muster for Battle is absolutely ridiculous. You know, often uh, I'd play Arena, uh, and, you know, my opponent would have, like, two or three muster for battles, and I'm like, you know, what what the hell am I supposed to do? And people in my chat be like, yeah, but you have two and three Azure Drakes, you know, and, yeah, once upon a time, Azure Drake was a really powerful card, but we're not really at that stage yet. We've shifted to the game where it is very much like the zoo-constructed um, type of play in Arena, where cards that are really powerful in that shape are really, really powerful in Arena, especially because usually you're up against garbage. Um, so muster for battle, you know, when you drop that and your opponent has, you know, just vanilla 2-3 creatures, you, you're just going to slay him if you have a few buffs. So, yeah, that's the way Hearthstone is shifting these days. Um, I really hope that uh, another dynamic kind of plays in, maybe a new way to accelerate big cards or make use of them. You know, I talked about improving bad cards, uh, and I thought that was a way to go about it, but it seems like that may not happen. Um, but the idea is that um, the cards that are released in each, each expansion, while they change the meta, you know, this way, that way, 
all in all, they kind of funnel into one tunnel, and that tunnel is, um, you know, the game is far more refined and aggressive, and the first few turns of the game are so important that you will just win the game from having the perfect opener in so many cases. And this is this is so because you know they're not they're not introducing very effective defensive tools and for them to be able to actually you know sell these new cards to players they have to be better than their older versions so black rock mountain they try to make like slightly better mid-rangey cards that didn't really work because people weren't really playing mid-rangey cards to begin with uh, it certainly helped some of the combo decks but those aren't quite the same um, and you know how much better are aggressive cards going to get uh, until we really need uh, like actual removal. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. The game seems to be moving this direction and I don't think it's that bad, but um, it does seem like uh, a lot of the depth is uh, removed from the actual gameplay when the game is decided from opening hands being the perfect one, two, three. All in all though, uh, I'm still having quite a bit of fun. I just hope that new dynamics are introduced uh, in the future in the game because so much is possible and it just has to be realized. Hope you guys enjoy my review. Next time, pick the zombie chow and maybe you will do, do a little bit better in Arena. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys tomorrow.